In the height of mushroom season in the Pacific Northwest, I decided to head out to the coast of Washington to join about a hundred other fungi fanatics and mycologists for a weekend in the woods of fungus, food, friends, and foraging. In a small fishing town called Oysterville on the Long Beach Peninsula, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean. I heard about this event on Facebook forums and some huge names in mycology were going to be there, so I had to go. I loaded up my Chevy Tahoe and headed to the Coastal Fungi Symposium 2022 to dive into the world of mycology with a bunch of like-minded people. Some notable names in the world of mycology are going to be out here, like Larry Evans, Daniel Winkler, Jack Johnson and Lauren Ray, Graham Steinruck, Rishi Strauss, Hart Singer, Alan Rockefeller, and that dude from Mushroom Wonderland. Oh yeah, that's me. I wanna thank all of the amazing and gracious people for making this event happen and allowing me the opportunity to document the event. So here's my take on the 2022 Coastal Fungi Symposium, only on Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Rishi Strauss. Um, I come from the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia. Me and my co-organizers for the Coastal Fungi Symposium, where I am right now on the um, Long Beach Peninsula of Washington State. Uh, me, Graham Steinruck, and Drew Ryan all got together and um, wanted to create an educational gathering of um, basically just all of our friends and and role models that study fungi with us and all come together and share what we've been learning with each other um, and encourage each other to grow as mycologists and spread information and cross-pollinate with each other. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, I'm Graham Steinrich. I'm the chef and a part coordinator for the Friends in Fungi uh, Coastal Symposium. We're in the, this is like the main cooking area for the Coastal Fungi Symposium, yeah? Correct, yeah, as well as the somehow the microscopy zone. Yeah, the microscopy. Nice. <laughs> and the seating area. This whole place feels like it's kind of leaning, huh? It is, yeah. yeah. It actually it makes you start to... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're the chef here. I am the chef, okay. yeah. And um, yeah, I'm just major nerd about mycology. Fungi freak. It's a little hectic because it is small. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's leaning a little bit. So this is V. Hi, hi. Hi, V. I'm Aaron from Mushroom Wonderland. Hi, nice to meet you. We're gonna do last month curry, noodle curry, oh, my man. mom's recipe. What kind of mushrooms are you using tonight? Oh, so many. Oh, we're, we're already having um, morel broth in there and uh, matsutake broth for Ooh. the vegetarian version. And then we're just. What's your background? Do you cook in a restaurant? I did cook in quite a few restaurants in Denver. Um, that's where I'm from, is Denver, Colorado. Oh, cool. And so I worked in a lot of fine dining there, just kind of the school of hard knocks. I started as a dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. I cooked in a lot of restaurants. Up. Yeah, so nice. and line cooking is still one of my loves. Like, I just love the, like, heat of the kitchen. It's just such a fun feeling. So it's been really fun and just really, like, uh, just such an awesome opportunity to cook for all these cool. super rad mycologists and just awesome guests. Just really cool cool people that came out this year. The food's really fun. People have been coming in and out, really interactive. Some people are jumping in and wanting to help cook. So the cooking class that we're doing is kind of just like demonstrations if you want to come see us cooking here. Um, cool. But sometimes we're like, get out. There's too much going on. It's just yeah. packed with like bomb me pickles, all sorts of mushroom pickles. So do you guys want this event to grow? I mean, is there room for it here? Or what do you see for the future? You know, this is as big oh, as like we can get it here. Um, yeah. And what I think is really fun is this is like such an intimate space to right. do something like this. So I wouldn't want to grow this event any larger. Right. But I do think in the future, Friends and Fungi will definitely be doing some larger events. Larger yeah. Style events. Cool. Whoa, I just thought I'd show there. you some of the treasures. Matsutake, look at all that. Was that all foraged here on the coast? Yeah, they're all from the Long Beach Peninsula area. Beautiful. Yeah. What are you going to make with the matsutake? 
Uh, so we're going to do the curry tonight. The oh Cambodian yeah. Cambodian curry, uh, yeah. So it'll be like a coconut milky, not super coconut heavy. It'll be a lot, like a little bit lighter. Lime, lemongrass, and then people are gonna kind of zoot the tops of them with all sorts Perfect. of condiments. Cool. And I feel like the barometric pressure, the mushrooms could feel the change in the weather. Because the second we showed up, you could see the buttons just pop. They're just all popping out. But I'm super excited and thrilled. It's like the the number of beautiful, amazing people here is insane. Like I was holding back tears again today. I'm like, oh my god, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so seriously. it's just so much fun. Some of my heroes are here for sure. So. Yeah, exactly. And then to be know them as friends is just like so rich and rewarding. You totally. Know? These are gonna want. So this is really awesome. So this really wonderful guy named Adam. He runs Ad Adam's Mushrooms. Wow. So this is his like chef mix. He apologized to us because he said, I wanted to put a lot more wild ones in there. Normally there's a lot more wild mushrooms in it. But since it was a little light in the season, we did, he provided these, donated them. And so thank you so much. The quality is incredible on his mushrooms. Um, Dang, so we got so quite yeah, a variety. Quite a variety. We got chanterelles. I think some of them are whites. I think this is actually a white chanterelle here. Mm -hmm. Uh, king trumpets, cultivated kings. Beautiful. We got some maitake and some organic shiitakes, one lobster, um, and then some shimeji, as I mentioned. But someone just right. walked in here from the foray with a box of lobsters. And I'm, I saw that. I saw them. <laughs> they were, That's the thing, it's like you turn around and everything. They're being washed. Yes. Oh, so Kirsten, yeah. she's uh, <laughs> expertly cleaning yeah. these lobsters over here. You don't want to eat put her to too work. much. <laughs> she's like, oh, I could help. Perfect. Like, oh, you could help. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so they are actually not too bad. So sometimes they use compressed air for the lobsters. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Thank but, you. Yeah. Just so excited here. It wasn't soon after arriving and looking around the property that I jumped in a car and headed off to one of the group forays led by Jack Johnson and Lauren Ray. So we're gonna just go on a foray with a bunch of people out in the woods and see what's growing out here and kind of pick their mind. This is a pair of mycologists who live in Bellingham, Washington. Jack Johnson went to school up there at Western Washington University. And that's generally the case, but I'd say with these, since they grow in urban settings, while Lauren Ray is a student of Evergreen State College in Olympia. Some of them have pink spores and you can look in the gills to see if there's pink. It was such an honor to go out into the forest with these two and hear what they had to say about mushrooms. There's a whole video on Mushroom Wonderland just about this foray. They both came to the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society annual mushroom show that I'm a big part of to help be ideas at the table. So these two really know their mushrooms. <laughs> it was an awesome time. Thank you guys for all the knowledge that you imparted. And hopefully this weekend we'll get to see some more and, uh, and in future videos with these two. And they're gonna be at our Mycological Society show on the 6th of November Ooh. doing IDs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So come check it out. Yeah. After our foray in the forest, the rain really started coming down. I returned to the Fungi Symposium where many talks were being given that afternoon out in the rain under some tents. Jack Johnson gave a couple of talks, as did Lauren Ray, and Daniel Winkler gave his talk titled Fruits of the Forest, all about his new book. There was a small area under the trees near the parking area that was reserved for tent camping. And the rain really started coming down that day. There was a winding path that led down the hill past a cabin and an old outhouse to a small cabin at the bottom of the hill. Did you come to this last year? Yeah, I did. Yeah, pretty cool little deal. I had no idea what to expect. Oh yeah, it's great. What do you think about it? Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, it's super rainy outside, so I'm doing a bunch of microscopy today. That afternoon was awesome. I got to spend the day with Alan Rockefeller in a rainy cabin on the Washington coast, warmed by a wood fire. Oh, fantastic. 
was I'm thinking. Oh, I had some of the one. Yeah, fit right in. I found them. Oh, wow. wow. That day he prepared and looked at tons of slides in the microscope and talked all about how the microscope works. The oh, spider that I found under a fern. So that's going to be a separate video here only on Mushroom Wonderland. Well, awesome. Thank you, Alan, for this little uh, adventure in microscopy in this cozy little cabin on the coast. And, uh, the kitchen staff continually made food all the way through the day and into the night. There were so many different varieties of food, all mushroom infused. A lot of Cambodian based food with mushroom broth and sticky rice. All of the kitchen staff really outdid themselves for this event. That night, Tay and Ryeth gave a talk about relational mycology that was really interesting, and it was time to hit the bed, which was actually just my truck. All right, everybody, show you my digs for the night. Yeah, I'm just sleeping in the Tahoe. Could be worse, man, it's nice and comfy. I got my air mattress, so that concludes day one of the 2022 Coastal Fungi Symposium. It has steadily poured rain all day long, and uh, everybody managed to stay in good spirits. Um, it is a testament to good clothing and good socks and good boots. You want to stay warm. You want to stay dry. If you're a mushroom picker, if you just um, enjoy being out in the forest in the Pacific Northwest, you're going to need good gear. Anyways, I'm going to get some shut-eye tonight. Uh, this concludes the first night of the Fungi Symposium. And uh, what an awesome time. So, um, yep, nighty night, and we'll see you in the morning. So here I am waking up, <laughs> making some coffee on the jet boil, getting ready for day two, Saturday here. Excited for what today brings. I don't have any noisy roosters here, so that's kind of nice. Morning. Good morning. Day two. Yeah, day two. The sun's out. The morning of day two was a stark contrast to the soggy and blustery day before. People woke up and sipped coffee infused with reishi and mushroom infused cocoa as the sun shined on the rain drenched trees. The main stage that morning featured Jack Johnson giving a lecture about glamorous slime molds. The breakfast was another Cambodian influenced dish of rice porridge swimming in a rich broth and complemented with various vegetables and toppings. It's a Cambodian congee. It has fried garlic in the broth, chicken broth, lots of chicken feet, but it's a soothing thing for me. I love it. I grew up eating this and all the garnish, you can add whatever you want, herbs. So there's pickled cabbage, daikon, carrots, scallions. There's culantro, cilantro, and chili crisp, and this is pickled sarcodon that we found from Mount oh, Hood, man. and Alan and I uh, were there a couple of weeks ago, and I pickled them up, and... So is this a pretty common, like, Cambodian breakfast? Yes, but oh. not with the pickled mushrooms that way. I just oh, yeah. This is Pacific Northwest Fusion. Normally, there's yeah. pickled daikon, but it's a little bit more fermented, but this, because we had um, the banh mi stuff, and I'm like, it'll go. We need the acidity yeah. countering with the the saltiness of the broth, and then there's a squeeze of lime, so it's kind of oh. like a pho, and just make your own bowl the way you like. And if it doesn't work, it's all your fault because you put something wrong in there. Yeah, it was so, <laughs> so good. Thank you. You're welcome, enjoy. He there prefers his breakfast served oh, on a microscope. That that's, <laughs> that's, how Rockefeller, oh, that's how Alan eats breakfast, just so you know. <laughs> Pickled carrots, pickled onions, <laughs> chopped green onion, Thai basil, 
Oh, what? You don't find this at Denny's in the morning. This is a not, unique not, breakfast. Not your typical. You got any surprises? Is it good? There, Doyle. I think there might be a little matzo. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. A little matzo That's yeah. the secret with the vegetarian today. It's actually it's good to be vegetarian because you're pure matzo So <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian, so I got denied the matzo Well, I think that you should probably try a little bit. Right. 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 I think so. <clears throat> matzo taki. <laughs> Taylor, I'm the volunteer coordinator, one of the volunteer coordinators here at the event. I also have a honey booth here. I'm a natural beekeeper um, or bee guardian. I sell, I have an Etsy shop. Um, I do little pop-ups here and there. My Etsy, it's Tailored Botanicals, um, no apostrophe, T-A-Y-L-O-R, D-B-O-T-A-N-I-C-A-L-S. Taylor Botanicals, uh, Instagram, Earth is my medicine. Yeah, I sell honey, I have beeswax, uh, propolis tincture, I have some natural hair care products and everything has like beeswax or and or honey. Hi, my name is Erin Marquis. I'm, I'm the creator of Erin the Forest and mushroom inspired ceramics. And... Do you have your own kiln and stuff? I do have my own kiln. Cool, just... so she makes this all, all at home, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what's a good way to get a hold of you if people want to buy some of this beautiful? Yeah. The best way is to find me on Instagram, Erin the Forest, um, E-R-I-N, the Forest. Um, and then I also have a website, uh, AaronMarquis.com. So, but cool. Instagram is probably the easiest way. <laughs> Very cool. The other main booth was from a mushroom farm from Tenino, Washington called Mica Parisal. And they had an amazing variety of super healthy pre-made mushroom kits, various inoculated wood dowels, and spawn of living mycelium. They also sell bulk spawn and liquid cultures. Very cool stuff and highly recommended. It wasn't long until I was to head out on a foray with Alan Rockefeller, his partner Davi, and a bunch of other people at one of the local nearby state parks. All right, so we're riding along to an undisclosed location somewhere on the Washington coast. Here with Alan Rockefeller and Davi. She's been our cook, an amazing cook this weekend and driver. And there's a lot of mushrooms on your dashboard. What's, what's all this? I've seen the mushrooms, but never this many big ones. Uh, we've got a really good Sarkodon collection at Mount Hood a couple weeks ago. And so they're up there. We also have these nice green rusulas. That's also from Mount Hood. And this is Gastrobolitis. A bunch of mushrooms in the back. Yeah. Back window, too. Yeah, definitely. What happens if the cops blow you over? Um, oh, I love mushrooms, uh, even more than hippies, so I think it would go really well. <laughs> <laughs> that afternoon, I was honored to be able to follow Alan with my camera and hear him talk about all the mushrooms we encountered. About a dozen other people from the symposium were in attendance and also got to ask Alan questions. A few different sizes so I can lay out some bigger ones, some smaller ones, and then these are... These only grow with these certain pines, so if we can get some pine needles and even better cones from these pine trees, that would be really nice to add. Like this? Swillis tomentosis. Oh, yeah. Uh, Swillis, or no? Uh, I don't think I've eaten tomentosis because it doesn't really grow very much where I live. But, um, so you're doing an iNaturalist observation right now? iNaturalist observation right now, and then. <laughs> I take a picture and uh, put the picture on iNaturalist and Mushroom Observer. Oh, this is cute. Nice. How many obs observations do you have on iNaturalist, do you know? Um, somebody told me I had like 25,000 the other day. I haven't looked recently, but they may have been correct. So this is Amanita muscaria, and you can tell it's the North American one because the vulva is yellow. So Amanita muscaria subspecies Flava vulvata. Sometimes you'll see ones where the vulva is completely white all the time, and that's the European one. So this one's got these concentric rings at the stem base, and this nice orange cap. It could be red or orange. 
and they're very delicious, but a little bit poisonous and a little hallucinogenic. Cool. Just a little. Where are you looking for the yellow? Uh, the sun gets rid of the yellow, so I'm kind of looking under here where the sun hasn't hit it very much. You can see the yellowish tint in the vulva there. So it needs special... So these things hatch out of an egg, and it starts with an egg, and the egg is covered in this called a universal veil, and then as it expands, the universal veil breaks up, and part of it sticks to the stem base here, so it makes these concentric rings, and then other parts turn into the warts. And any special preparation otherwise? I like to saute them in butter, and then when they're golden brown on all sides, add a little bit of salt and pepper. You don't need to cook it too long, or how long? Do you Until it's golden brown. Do you boil them? No. You don't That's worry about that. I that gets you. Uh, that gets rid of uh, the most of the flavor and also the psychoactive effect. Oh, the, the cooking it gets rid of yeah. the psychoactive effect. Well, if you boil them, boil oh, them and throw away the water. So if you if you were going to eat this, how much of it would you eat? <laughs> uh, if I didn't want any effect, just like five bites. And if I did want an effect, more like ten to twelve bites. So and then more than that can get real unpleasant. Uh, that's about a good amount for a, a very mild psychoactive effect. And you'll notice it's working when you start to get sleepy. Yes, exactly. And then you would fall asleep and sleep real good. <laughs> That's really cool. It's not Mycena with those really closely spaced gills and plain cap. No, I don't recognize it. Are there any more of them around? There were Beautiful. quite a few. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's go work on those next. Do you dare me to eat this? Uh, yeah, dare you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> dare you to spit it out. Oh, it's like split open. That's How's it taste? <laughs> Nutty. Nutty. I'm like a pecan or something. We got to see him identify dozens of mushrooms, tell us all the facts about all the mushrooms we found, and showed us his procedures as far as uploading his findings to iNaturalist and Mushroom Observer. Oh, Davi, Davi! I see it, <laughs> Alan! Oh, but the, I was pointing out those before. So you got those, yes, you got I those, see them. all over. Oh my gosh, we're gonna eat good tonight. <laughs> and we all got to learn how Alan photographs mushrooms in the wild. That way or the other Your way? Your hands on the ground. Okay. And then hold it. And then hold this purple thing. What do you got here? Well, whatever it is, it's exciting. It's either a uh, Ricanella oh. or a Hygrosopy. Okay. Um, you guys love these things, huh? Yeah. Uh, your tongue is like a chemical sensor. So they're super embedded in the moss. Design. We're just kind of slowly excavating. You can see them just oh my little God. orange droplets. They look almost like they'd just be flat to the ground, you know, because of how buried they are. So we've had to kind of unearth them, but you can see a nice big one. They've got these oh. decurrent gills. Oh, beautiful. Look, it looks orange. like a little cantharellus. Yeah, and they've got a sunken cap. So it's kind of an umphalimbo. Gross. Yeah, so we're wondering cool. is it a waxy cap or is it the Ricanella, which is a moss uh, associated? <laughs> trying to get the entire thing. It's a shade of yeah. orange. Ricanella. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ricanella. <laughs> Who's here, honey? It's Rick and Ella. <laughs> Sitting there next to Quite a other. collection. What is that? Mushrooms are very sexy. Yeah, and there's some <laughs> other mushrooms yeah. that are called wow. heterokaryotic. And That's strange looking. It's like mm -hmm. pleuritoid the way it's growing like that. It's yeah, bizarre. Okay, What's this? this? So it's kind of gets, gets is that Lepiota? That's a Thalia Schwanitia, right? I can't see underneath. No, I can't see underneath it. Okay. I think that's what that is. No. What's that? Yep. Well, colors. Yeah? It just looks a little older, it's... doesn't it? This is Asteraphora lycoperdoides. 
Oh, so, oh, the Astrophora. Okay, so we yeah. got the star shaped spore. Star shaped spore. It's a parasitic mushroom on these blackening rizzolas. Yeah. yeah, and I know it's, there's two species. There's uh, Parasitica and there's uh, uh, Lycoperdoides. Uh -huh. I can tell it's Lycoperdoides because the top is starting to turn brown. And what that is, is this mushroom has gills and it produces spores like a normal mushroom that are sexual spores. Yeah. But then on top, it also produces um, chlamydospores or, or asexual spores. And so it's an interesting strategy. And a lot of mycoparasitic uh, mushrooms do that. Uh, Dendrocolibia racemosa also has those two different dispersal methods. And that one also parasitizes rusula, but it's in a totally different family. Oh. <laughs> so super, super weird cool. like that. It's like they call them a powder cap, right? Yeah, powder cap. So I think yeah. it's referring. I think it's referring more to the, uh, the puff ball, like like Operdon, than wolf fart. But maybe I don't know. Maybe someone also thought that. <laughs> so cool. Mycologists are weird. And the gills on those are super cool because they're like underdeveloped, so they look like there's jello or something in the gills. They look super strange. If we picked oh, one off and looked at the gills, very cool. So this is Heart Singer. Thanks for your ID. Oh, Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Cool. Pleasure. This is the blue chanterelle. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Polly is zealous. Where did that come from? It's not native here, I think yeah. Jack and Lauren brought that. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, did they bring it from somewhere else? I mean, someone Cascades. brought wool dyed oh. with it. That's why I've seen oh, it growing okay. in the Cascades, but. Um, yeah, he gave me a little piece of it to yeah, dive yeah. with. You found these in the Washington Cascades? Yeah. Really? Yeah. South. Good, that, by Mount Southern, Southern, yeah. Southern, yeah. Okay. Mount Adams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. It's a nice, but not this year. What do we got here, Alan? What's that one? <laughs> <laughs> so that's from be, Barry's Basket, I think. Uh, Aztecorum. Aztec Azure Essence. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a powerful piece of medicine right there. Look at how it's blue really it is. Hmm. This is grows native right out here on the coast, yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Suppose I should volunteer my These turn really cool red in the KOH. Yeah, we watched that. Yeah. Also makes dye. Oh, with the crew gonfus. Yeah. They make dye. I've okay. Gotten, I've gotten dye out of them. Cool. Do you just randomly take mushrooms and then try to dye fabric with them? Yeah. Cool. The I've always wondered like how that <laughs> So how I know it's a Cortinarius is by that brownish uh, Cortina, the 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 kind of uh, little ring, on little ring up little here ring. near the top. Yeah. There's a couple of things stuck on there. Mm -hmm. You see how things are stuck on that the edge of that. Mm -hmm. The camera really wants to take a picture of your. Shirt. And so these, the, because that's why we put it in a group that has both a slimy stem and a slimy cap. Oh, great! That's they're they're hard to fresh. Cortinarius, a pretty big genus of mushrooms, yeah. Yeah, it's just probably, uh, I don't know, we had five, four or six tribes before, and I know they split that up a lot. So. Yeah, a lot of people are upset, huh? Or like, yeah, it's like daunting. No, no, it's, it's, it's a mess. I mean, it's, it's uh, you've got 600 kinds of, of mushrooms. It's hard to find <laughs> different characteristics that you can tease them apart. Right? These are generally no good to eat, huh? But I didn't want to oh, they're a huge source of food no, for I, I guess, uh, wildlife <laughs> right. in general, the Cortinarius. I mean, you're talking about a very yeah, I would have to bring big a group of mushrooms, to right? You're probably one of the, I would have to bring water, if not right. the most abundant, I mean, just, had, one of the uh, most abundant no, groups of like mushrooms in the, in the yeah. Pacific yeah. Northwest. These are mycorrhizal, they grow with trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all, and I'm, I'm too old for some of these we'll, Maybe tonight we'll... Uh, <laughs> Showing some under the black light. I can it's turn the black light on here and see if anything comes cool. out. I have one too. We should do a hunt or something. Be fun. I'm thinking more on the table. So see if we got anything <laughs> that'll make, make nice on the table. Uh oh, look at the edge. There you go. Oh, look at in the ca look at my camera. But sometimes oh, I what's causing that? A bruise? No, that's. Hmm. Yeah, we'll that is a handy. F to have. Like that's nice, huh? Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those can yeah. really. The pogey. Look, the, it's interesting. The edge of the pogey. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Does. That's yeah, that's, that's why it's a pogue on a I think yeah. that's the one that we see around here. And that, that does it's that like does have a nice reaction under the UV. Wow, and of course, that's the Hypholoma. Uh, or is that Hypholoma? Oh, wow. oh, yeah, yeah, the Hypholoma, hypholoma fasciculari. Yep. Oh, if you dye yarn scary. with this one, it fluoresces. 
cool. Veolius. Can we? What do we see and on it? it? Yeah. So yeah, you can get you get some mm-hmm. light out of that. That that, that um, is pretty this good. This guy Sydney, I know he makes. Uh, There's another one. Like a henna tattoo thing. Yeah, yeah. You know him? He's yeah, I just did a video with him last week. Yeah, yeah. another Singleton. edge phenomena there. Well, Sydney yeah. over Singleton. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. He he makes yeah. uh, these dyes that only he UV does henna. tattoos yeah. like henna uh-huh. with this stuff. Cool. And, then, and then when he's you could go. This was there, really neat. <laughs> that was, um, yeah, that, 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 that is a. Uh, <laughs> they talked about it before. Astrophora. Astrophora. Yeah, it's going to be uh, come Dendry. like a little puff ball when it dries, when it starts to dry out a bit. Because mm-hmm. they astrophora. They talked to us about um, one that grew on a black a blackening. Russell yesterday, and it was a yeah. Calibia dendro- tuberosa. Same thing. This is a blackening Russell. Dendro. Oh, go call him Dendro Calibia now. Okay, uh-huh. and that's Summer? the Dendro Calibia is the one that has the the branching stem. It has the little, the little like okay. barbed wire coming down the stem or something. Okay. What do you guys got here tonight? We have a seafood mushroom paella. Ooh. So there's mushrooms, mushroom stock, porcini. Morel and lobster stock, oh and then gosh. lobster mushroom stock, and then there's clams. So look at the morel right there. Oh yeah, morels in there. Yes. And Dang. then salmon, and then there's a razor clam right here from out right out there. Oh, wow. Dude. The uh, purple heaven. savories are from Lilywap. Lilywap, I know Lilywap. Yeah, right, right by Hoodsport. Yeah. Yeah. Hammer, hammer. yeah. Cool. Yes. Right on. Thanks. You're welcome. Or- That Saturday night after the amazing dinner, we all headed up to the main stage where Alan Rockefeller was giving a two-hour keynote talk. The first portion of his talk was about psilocybin mushrooms of North America and their hallucinogenic allies. Um, so I'm going to really quick just uh, talk briefly about all the different psilocybin mushrooms that we have in North America. And the one that's most common right where we are here is psilocybin azurescence. And this is the second most potent psilocybin mushroom known. Um, so this one grows in coastal dune grasses. So also in that group is psilocybin alenii, which is more common further south, but also grows around here, but only in wood chip landscaping. So only in artificial habitats, nobody really knows where they evolved. And so when I find mushrooms like this, I take this, I cut the stems off and put them on tin foil. And then I put another layer of tin foil over that to keep it clean and let it sit overnight. In the morning, when you take the caps off, you get spore prints like this. And then you can take these spore prints. I let them dry for about five minutes and then cut them up and put them in a brand new Ziploc bag. And that way you can save them. You can send them all over the world in the mail or give them to your friends and people can um, either use them for microscopy or they can put a little bit of this on agar and fire up a culture. Another really common one around here is Psilocybe cyanescens. So Psilocybe cyanescens is known as the wavy cap and the caps get real wavy when they get mature. And they're also very potent, um, about the same as Psilocybe alenii. However, they weigh a whole lot less. They're much thinner mushrooms, so these dry down to be very lightweight things. Uh, another really cool one is Psilocybe pelliculosa. And Psilocybe pelliculosa is real common around here. Um, it usually comes out under the shore pines about three weeks after the Psilocybe azurescens fruit. So um, probably start seeing a whole lot of this in about, in about a month. And these look a lot like Gallerina or Mycena, but they have purple spores. And so if you pay attention to the little tiny mushrooms um, that are under the shore pines, um, or sometimes there'll be hundreds of thousands of them in clear cuts, uh, you'll see these. And then another real common one in Washington state is Psilocybe semilanciata. So these are known as Liberty Caps, and they grow in the grass, always near the coast. And so I usually find them kind of like in fields where there has been elk or sheep, though they never grow directly from the dung. They're always uh, just out of the grass, but it really helps if something is kind of mowing the grass down, uh, grazing on the grass so you can see these things. These things are extremely potent, but they barely stain blue at all. So probably they don't have much of the enzyme that polymerizes the psilocin. 
uh, but pretty cool looking things. And then kind of a more rare one is Psilocybe baocystis. This one grows most commonly in Washington and British Columbia. Occasionally it turns up in Oregon, has not turned up in California yet. Uh, but this one is uh, closely related to Psilocybe semi-lanceata, and it grows in wood chips and also kind of like mulched gardens. It's pretty strong. And then Psilocybe cyanofibrillosa is a very elusive one, uh, but that was described from Washington as well. And Psilocybe stumpsii um, also can be real common in wood chips. The common name for this is blue ringers. So they have this blue ring on the stem. And these are also closely related to Semilanciata. Uh, another one that you'll see around here is Psilocybe ovodiosastidiata. And this one was discovered in Pennsylvania about 15 years ago by Richard Gaines. And he took mycelium from it and spread it all over the West Coast, and now it occurs all over the West Coast. Um, it's possible that it occurred all over the West Coast before he did that, too. Um, but this one is really closely related to Psilocybe cubensis, so it's uh, very distant from all these other ones that we've seen so far. Here's another kind of cool one. This one I ran into in Amsterdam uh, about 10 months ago, and this one is Psilocybe liniformans. Uh, so it's a really rare psilocybe species that grows on dung in Europe. Probably the first good photos of it. And occasionally I see cool plants, and so I'll throw them in the black velvet too, and uh, take some pictures of them. This is Clintonia andrusii, which is an orchid, and it makes these awesome blue berries, which don't taste very good. <laughs> so it is safe to taste any mushroom. It is not safe to taste any plant. So anytime I find a plant and I don't know what it is, the first thing I do is I pop it in my mouth. And um, that's very dangerous. And that's, um, that's good because I like dangerous things. And it also um, kind of gives me an idea of what kind of chemicals are in the plant and helps me remember it. Um, so you definitely shouldn't do that because it's not safe. And I found out firsthand that it's not safe when I was in a botanical garden in Tucson. And I saw this really cool thing. Um, it was in the grape family. And it was from South Africa. I had never seen it before. So I grabbed a leaf and started chewing on it. And about five seconds later, I got this ext extremely intense pain in my mouth. And it felt like I was being cut by little swords. Mm -hmm. And indeed, that's exactly what was happening. It had these calcium oxalate crystals. And they're very sharp uh, needles. And so they um, just slice your tongue up. And it really hurt, and I was wondering how long the pain would last, and the answer was about five minutes. Um, but I think there's some other ones that like last like all day or something. So um, don't try that at home, uh, or do, as long as you uh, know that you might die. <laughs> um, some of the plants are poisonous, and they have, like, there's, uh, they're so poisonous that there's no known low dosage for the toxicity. Like the uh, water hemlock, that cause all the muscles in your body to contract, and it's one of the most painful deaths known to man. And there's no amount so small that people don't like um, that people like know that it's a safe amount. So I don't know how much of that you could chew without dying. Probably not very much. Um, but I do know somebody who tasted it, and he said it, and he was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions about any of these things. Oh, yeah. It was an amazing end to an awesome night. A lot of us ended up in the cabin that night playing with microscopes and swapping stories. It was great to hang out with all of these people and honestly I shut the camera down just so that I could absorb the whole scene. That was kind of the same story with Sunday. I got up and had some breakfast and mainly went about doing interviews with people and just soaking in all of the lectures without having the camera rolling. All in all, this was an amazing weekend. I just want to give a huge shout out to all of the organizers at Friends and Fungi, like Rachi Strauss, Graham Steinruck, Drew Ryan, everybody that was involved, all of the speakers, and of course all the beautiful mushrooms that we got to see. What a cool weekend, and I can't wait to do it again next year. So if you're a mycophile and you like this kind of a video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we hope to see you on the next episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Much love, everyone. Peace.
flies, spore flies, spore flies, from my basket man farm. Woo! Wants to be abound when you touch the cold hard ground. High full threads we spread around. Flies, spore flies, spore flies, from my basket man farm. Woo! Wants to be abound when you touch the cold hard ground. So your half old threads may spread around Mushroom be like the apple in the tree While the mycelium's like that tree underground So pick it while it's wrapped and hold it by your side Some spores may get there right Fly, spore fly, spore fly From my basket may you fall Woohoo! to be a bang when you touch the whole hard grain So your half old friends may bread around <laughs> One day I got so many genders They can bend, they can bend To meet with almost whoever they please <laughs> All that sexual wealth They find it's easier for their health Take a cheap day and just meet with themselves <laughs> Fly, spore fly Spore fly From my own basket may you fall Monster be a bang when you touch the poor hard ground So your half old threads may spread around Spores everywhere, even in the air Every breath that we take Use us as their house So it's not too crazy to find out Found a hundred one fungi Living in our mouths Fly Spore fly Spore fly From my basket may you fall Woohoo Wants to be a bang When you touch the cold hard ground So your half old threads may spread around Fly So I'm a mushroom guru. I get questions all the time. Somebody got a woody conch or a pile of yellow slime. But it ain't about science, man. More like it's about me. Because the only thing they ever want to know is can you eat it? 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 Oh my. It might be hygrophorous, pretty as a flower. Or maybe psilocybin packed full of psychic power. Growing on a turd. Or growing on your feet. The only thing they ever want to know is can you eat it? 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 Oh my! Might be hygrophorus or hygrostomy. Excuse me. Might be a hebaloma growing on some bones, or maybe it's a truffle packed full of pheromones, looking like a turd or looking like a treat. The only thing they ever want to know is, can you eat it? Okay, well, <laughs> people look at me funny, like I'm some kind of dunce, but I smile when I tell them, you can eat any mushroom once. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, it growing right down there by your feet, with a name like poison pie. Now, are you sure y'all want to eat it? Can you 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 eat it? Oh, my. Oh, yeah. So I got tired of mushrooms. I couldn't take it anymore. And then I found myself on a wildflower tour. The girl showed us to really ums and then and then I mm. looked her in the eye and I said, Tell me, sister, please. Can you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome.